As most high-end quadcopters do, the 3DR Solo will try to return to you when the remote connection is lost or the battery is nearly empty. This pitiful specimen crashed into a building on its way home because it went in a straight line. Only a couple of days after the incident, a big update was rolled out to Android users. It included the rewind feature. Let's see if we can help this guy live to see his new software. To repair the chassis, I remove everything I can first. Battery bay, feet and all four motor pods. The shell consists of two parts that are actually glued together, which won't prevent me from getting the main board out, thankfully, but it will get in the way when straightening out and gluing the cracked parts. The extent of the damage from an ordinary crash makes me suspect that there are a lot of internal tensions in the plastic parts. That would justify the gluing, but ugh, maybe get another supplier instead? Oh, yeah. Since we are already inside, we might as well have a quick look at the electronics. In every motor pot, there are three RGB LEDs and driving transistors. A fully discrete brushless motor driver, consisting of six MOSFETs, and peculiarly two large Atmel microcontrollers. Surely one would be enough for motor driving, LED driving and mainboard communication, don't you think? The manual soldering on these is horrible. Thick flux residue and loose solder droplets. The GPS module features a Neo 7N receiver and a Tao glass antenna. Good quality components, but there's room for improvement. For example, with the infamous cardboard mod, or an upgrade to the Neo M8 receiver. But there are other YouTube videos about that already. The gimbal is actually totaled. My deepest sympathy. Multiple bent motor shafts and grinding motors, ripped off connectors and PCB footprints. I doubt I can do anything about it. As you can see, there's not a single Atmel microcontroller used in the gimbal. So I think it's safe to say that it was designed by another person or even another company than the one who was responsible for the motor pods. There's not necessarily something wrong with it, it just makes tech support and firmware updates a bit more difficult. It's a very nicely made gimbal otherwise. HDMI and Hero Bus pass-through, elaborately machined aluminium parts, Teflon tape on surfaces that the flat flex cable rubs against. One thing I don't like carbon potentiometers on every axis. Probably better than nothing, but ah, oh, come on, rotary encoders, please. By the way, those carbon potentiometers are exactly the same that are used in certain DJI gimbals. And finally, the main board. Not much happening on this side, except for a bit of power management. In the center of this densely populated module, there's an LTC4417, which is a power path controller that selects one of multiple redundant power supplies. No idea what its business is in this quadcopter, because its power supply, the big battery pack, is everything but redundant. Maybe it's a mandatory part for the Pixhawk flight controller, which is the black box on the other side. Apart from that, there's a $20 ARM Cortex-A9 system on chip that does the video overlay and streaming and also has a Wi-Fi module. Hardware-wise, that thing is the only difference I can tell between a common DIY multicopter and this polished product. There's also a lot of software to go along with it and the great usability it provides justifies the price tag, I guess. The only problems I found on the mainboard were these two traces that were damaged by a bent gimbal part, I think. 
cleaned up the area to make sure that there are no shorts and replaced the traces with short pieces of copper wire. Done. All the other repairs are purely mechanical. All broken plastic parts are temporarily glued with super glue, which took a lot of patience because of residual stresses in the material. That's neither pretty nor strong, so I'll drill a couple of small holes around the cracks and cover the inside with JB Weld. That's at least strong. After 8 hours. I'll attach a couple of these threaded standoffs to the motor mounts to have reliable reference points. That reveals that one of the arms is actually not coplanar with the other ones, and I think it'll be a problem in flight. I gently applied some hot air and that successfully got it back into position. Well, some detailing here and there, but I think it needs a complete paint job anyway. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll have to split this video into two parts because I kind of need space on my hard drive right now. And we have to wait for replacement props to arrive anyway. So in part 2 there'll be either lift off or some more interesting problems to take care of and a microscopic GoPro repair because the camera didn't survive the crash entirely without harm either. If you want to get a notification when that's out feel free to subscribe.